Well, for more insight into what these latest trade moves mean, let's bring in international business executive Ryan Patel. He joins us live from Los Angeles. Welcome back, Ryan. Thanks for having me. Now, China says that the U.S. has launched a trade war. The U.S. officials call their tariff moves a negotiation. So how likely are these differing views of tariffs to escalate tensions? Or really, is there a way to still reverse these decisions? Well, right now, I don't see it reversing it. Obviously, these, this is starting because it was a negotiation tactic. And I think when you see China come back this quickly and to match um, the amount that the U.S. Is you know, had put the tariffs in, to me, that signals that this is still a negotiation. If China would have came back above that number, I think we would have seen it escalate even further. Not to say it's not escalated now, but it, it, this could have been a little bit uh, deeper path. Now, as we know, the U.S. is imposing these tariffs in two phases. So what sort of wiggle room does this give the U.S. when it comes to the second phase? A little, right? It's around $34 billion. Uh, I think I think there's time to kind of see where the conversation, you know, they, I think they're not even, they're not, they didn't put taxes on cell phones. And I think it was a few other categories that we, you know, on that initial list that most people thought they was going, going to do. So I think there was a little bit of they wanted to call an olive branch, but it was, it was more of a, more of a place to kind of hold a few more things to depending on what the negotiation goes for the next few weeks. Now let's break down which industries will be most impacted, starting with um, the fallout from the U.S. tariffs. Yeah, I mean, obviously with the U.S. tariffs, you're going to see they really, the U.S. administration focused on this tech and this, more importantly, the vision of 2025 of what China was trying to be, the, the you know, obviously their, their vision. I think to me that signaled uh, a kind of a stance that the U.S. is going to go after that specific category. Not that we did not know that from the IP side, but for them to come out and say the techn technology side, that's a big deal. So we know that the U.S. is targeting China's future, essentially. But what about China's retaliatory tariffs? Which sectors are going to bear the brunt there? Well, it definitely is the soybeans for sure, right? Everyone's been talking about that. But specifically agriculture and automotives and even uh, airlines, I think those kind of manufacturing goods is interesting. Obviously, majority of those is going to hit the agriculture pretty hard and specifically in some of those uh, red states that they would say here in the U.S. And by red states, um, you obviously mean the, the voters who overwhelmingly supported uh, President Trump in the last election. Um, you know, yeah, mind you, this is done on purpose, I believe, right? This is not, this is not by accident that they are attacking some of his support, support states. So certainly some strategic targeting on both sides. Now, let's yes. look at the, how the trade dispute affects other aspects of bilateral relations. For example, China's help with the DPRK denuclearization talks. And this is where you saw the, um, you know, commissioner and China kind of come out to today, and, and even with some of the advisory cabinet members from China come out and say that this will have a somewhat effect with North Korea because the China that helped kind of helped bridge that gap. And, you know, when, when the administration comes out and said that it's still kind of, hey, we put this trade war, but we still have a friendly conversation, it kind of gives a little bit mixed signals about how that's going to deal with North Korea specifically. And in terms of not only just dragging in geopolitics, you also have a lot of countries involved in the production pipeline of goods that eventually get exported from China. And the IMF has already said these America First trade policies threaten not just the global trading system, but really undermine the U.S. economy. How do you think we might see that manifested? A, f a few different ways. I think the, the panic will, if this continues to deepen and goes further down in a longer period extended time, you will start to see the other, you know, the other trade partners to try to kind of step in here. But more importantly, the deficit then continues to, to, for the U.S. economy, the deficit continues to get larger. And obviously the IMF came out and also said, you know, if the economy is so good in the U.S., they need to kind of try to attack that number as well. So, you know, you don't want to have a, a deficit that is growing and growing and growing in the midst of this trade war. And even with the trade war, you also have several U.S. trade allies also involved in trade pacts that the U.S. has pulled out of. For example, the TPP, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, now the TPP-11. And that's the third biggest trade zone in the world after the European Union, who also have tariffs from Trump. And then NAFTA, also in the middle of negotiations. What sort of challenges or opportunities do you think these U.S.-China trade tensions create with this? Well, first and foremost, you've got to get a you get a popcorn bag and start watching and keep up with all this stuff because everyone's tariff, <laughs> tariff in the U.S. As of, the, as of right now. But the opportunity here is what, you know, I think the G7 summit was an opportunity, could have been an opportunity to strengthen the um, alliance together. And that didn't go the way I think 
uh, majority of people believe. But I think in the midst of this with China and the U.S., there's two routes that I believe. One, that the U.S. and China actually become a lot stronger together, and that could set a signal. Or they do, they do not want to be as strong together and partner with other partners for China, specifically in Southeast Asia. And if I was, if the U.S. administration wanted to kind of combat themselves to kind of withhold the, their biggest trade partner with China is to go to the EU, Canada, and Mexico and strengthen their relationship on better trade on trade deals that they don't have to rely on each other. Now, obviously, things are still kind of tense at the moment. So do the two sides have any plans for bilateral talks at any level to at least try and come to an agreement? I think so. Probably not today, <laughs> in the next 24 hours. But I think there's the July 6th date where these things kind of have are going to be implemented in, and I think from now until July 6th, I believe that there will be some talks. You know, we'll, we'll probably find out in a few days or three, four days to see if there is going to be, if they're just not going to talk at all, and then we're going to have the second round of the next step of tariffs going to be involved. But I have a feeling that there will be some kind of conversation up here. Obviously, the rhetoric from, from China specifically was, I'm going to match your tariffs. So I think it still causes, uh, there's a lot of tension, but there's enough room for open communication. All right, thank you as always for your insight. International Business Executive Ryan Patel.